you know, if you think about it, so much of our life is based around the word hope. When we're kids, we hope that we're going to pass that test in school. We're going to make the team and get into the college that we've been dreaming about. We then turn our attention to our jobs and we hope we're going to get a job and get that promotion and be able to provide for ourselves and our families. We even hope about things like, I hope my football team is going to have a good season. I'm going to be able to fit into those jeans the next time I put them on. And if it's raining, I sure hope I can get a close spot at the grocery store. We are made to hope. Isn't that great? Sometimes our hopes go a little bit deeper, don't they? Things like, I hope I'm going to be able to spend more time with my family and my friends this year. I hope my prayer life and my Bible study life can be more intentional. I hope my husband and I can have a long life together. And I hope that God will find my life honorable. I don't know about you, but this past six weeks, I sure have found myself with my list of hopes growing exponentially. I hope that our economy is going to be able to bounce back quickly. I hope that a vaccine and medicines and testing for every single person is available just as quick as possible. I hope that our healthcare workers are taken care of by God in a way that we just can't understand. I hope that the people who have lost their jobs know that our country cares for them and they will be provided for and that those jobs will come back. I hope that people are hungry, have a meal tonight, and are cared for. I hope somehow that I have the ability to help that I will. I hope that next year as the leaves start to come out on the trees and everything starts to become green, that I will stop and pay attention and take it all in as I've been able to do this year working from my dining room. I also hope that the children and the families that I have seen playing up and down the street, riding their bikes and laughing and having a great time, that that will continue. Because before this, I didn't see that a lot. I hope that when Jeff and I go back to our normal office, that we'll make the time to have lunch together way more frequently. That we'll play games, we'll take long walks, and we'll just sit and talk more than we did before. You know, I think it's important to pay attention to our hopes. How many of them are horizontal and how many of them are vertical? What I mean by that is this. Our hopes that are horizontal, those hopes are merely pleasurable. They come and they go. But our hopes that are vertical, the ones that are rooted in the truth and love and the provision of Jesus Christ, those hopes, those are the ones that are eternal and life-giving. The two women, when they went to the tomb after Jesus had died, they went there hopeless. They, their hope was gone. The person they loved and that they trusted and they had hope in had died. But when they got to the tomb, the stone had been rolled away. And then they had an encounter with Jesus. And that encounter changed everything. It restored hope. And not just hope for those two women, but hope for you and for me and for everyone that calls on the name of Jesus. The Bible tells me in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. So God is hope and he gives us that hope. Do you know that that hope is available for you and for me every single morning when we open our eyes, despite the circumstances in our lives and what's going on in our world? If you don't know that hope, I would love to have a conversation with you and help you to begin to understand it. But perhaps you do know that hope, and today you just needed that gentle reminder to bring your heart that is heavy, to bring your worries and your burdens and even your hopes and lay them at the feet of the one who loves you the most. I really do hope I get to see you again soon. I sure miss you.